The Morlock wizard once again asked the handyman, Seto, if he is able to open the lock by himself. Seto opened up his bag of tools, which was filled with a number of different tools lined up in an organized way. Relza asks curiously about the tools in fascination. Seto is working keenly on the door to open the lock, while the other three stand there watching them. Relza is worried if he is unable to open the lock and activates the trap while trying to open the door. La Fan Pan tells her that she herself wanted a skilled thief as her ally. Just then, with the help of his tools, Seto manages to open the door. Everyone is amazed by his work and appreciates him. Seto pulls the door, but everyone is surprised to see another door behind it. La Fan Pan comments that room is really secured well, so that no one can enter it. Seto again starts working on opening the lock, but strangely finds it difficult to unlock. The Morlock wizard tells him that the door is locked with a magic seal, and that is why he's unable to open it. With the help of the wizard's magic, he is able to open the door successfully. They open the door and find a treasure box inside the room. They cheered up upon seeing the treasure chest and encourage Seto to open the treasure box as well. All of them step inside the room and Seto starts his work on the treasure chest. Seto recalls his memory from the other world where he works as a locksmith to open up the locks. He manages to open the door to a house for a lady who forgets to bring along the key with herself. Seto tells her that the total cost of the work is 7,000 yen. The woman complained that he was charging her more than the usual and asked him for a discount. Seto tells her that the amount is what he usually charges all his customers and that the price is even mentioned on the advertisement as well. The woman argues that 7,000 yen is too much for one minute's worth of work and that he should give her a discount. While recalling the memory, he manages to open the chest and feels fulfilled upon completing the task, more than in the previous world. He opens the chest and comes across a mimic, which attacks him. Relza manages to kill the monster with the help of her sword, easily, and asks Seto if he's alright. Seto thanks the armed warrior Relza for protecting him. Just then, Seto realizes that Relza's helmet was loose. He offers to fix it for her, as it would be dangerous if the helmet comes off during a fight. Relza asks him that if she really has to take off the helmet, but Seto asks her to take off the helmet so that he can fix it. Relza takes off her helmet and tells him to fix it quickly. Seto tells her that it will only take a little while to fix it. He sits down and begins his work on the helmet. Relza appreciates his work by saying that he really can fix anything. Seto tells her that he is a handyman and should be able to do all the works to fix things around him. Relza asks him if he is a locksmith or a handyman. Seto tells her that he works as a handyman and is able to do various works like fixing bags, opening locks, looking for lost dogs, and a lot of other things. Relza asks him if he also likes dogs. He tells her that once his client lost his dog named Shibamaru, so he helped him find him. Relza laughs upon hearing the strange dog name and unconsciously touches her scar on the face and tells him that he is amazing for doing all the things. After taking the chest outside, all of them are sitting in the fields around mountains while the wizard Morlock was busy. Seto asks Relza if wizard Morlock is supposed to be a great wizard. LaFanPan tells him that he is over level 80 and better than all of them. Then she reveals that Morlock is level 80 while Relza is level 41, she herself is level 35, and Seto is level 8. Relza tells him that he is great, but he often forgets his incarnations, and that he even forgets where they were supposed to regroup. They share the memory with him and tell him that they keep waiting for him for a long time, but he didn't show up, so they went into the dungeon ahead of him. They tell him that he then used teleportation magic to catch up to them later. They tell him he made a blunder while calculating his coordinates and fused him with a golem. Seto asks them how he manages to help them. Relza tells them that he helped him as he was fused with a golem. They share another incident with him and tell him that another time he forgot his incantations and was kicked out of his own party. Relza tells him that he forgot about them and that they were worried about him because he disappeared and then appeared again with the undead. They hardly managed to get out of there. After that, they tell him another incident where all of them died and only the Morlock managed to survive. The old man's energy was drained completely, but he still manages to drag all their bodies behind him and escape to the surface. Morlock saved their lives by selling all their weapons and bringing them to the church. She then remembers and asked Morlock why he didn't sell only her armor. 
Morlock replies by saying that he forgot to sell the armor. They continue their journey. Just then, the Morlock complained of hurting his back. Divine magician La Fanpan manages to heal him with a pain relief and improved blood circulation. During the journey, La Fanpan helps them to recover, but also expects to get paid as well. She finishes her job and asks for a gold coin in return. Morlock complains that she is being greedy and asks for money, even though they are allies. She thanks him for the money, and then puts the coin in her bag. After seeing the large size of the bag, Sato offers to carry the bag for her. He mentions that even if she uses her magic to carry the bag, it's still heavy for her. Sato offers to make a bag for her, to which she agrees. He tells her that he used to work in home improvement centers and that he is used to working on the locks and on the bags as well. He cuts the fabric for the bag and custom tailors it for her, size and wings. He then presents her the bag and asks her to try it out. La Fan Pan likes the bag and asks for the price of the bag. Sato declines her offer by saying that she didn't have to pay for the bag, but La Fan Pan tells him that he should be compensated for his labor. Sato tells her that Morlock is always helping him with his magic, so she can make his back better. Morlock asks him if he is sure to be compensated in this way. La Fan Pan comments that she doesn't like this kind of thing, but still helps Morlock with pain relief and improved blood circulation. Morlock tells them that the healing process is working even better than before. Since that day, La Fan Pan takes care of his back pain even more than before. Sato is working on his work with the help of a measuring tape. He measures the length in centimeters and millimeters. Upon hearing the terms, both La Fan Pan and Ralza inquire about the terms. Sato tells them that they are units of measurements in this world, and asks them what unit they use in their world for measurement. Ralza tells them that they use Madarica as a unit of length. Relza tells him that La Fan Pan is roughly one Madarica. Sato then calculates that one Madarica almost equals to 30 centimeters. Sato then wonders about the inspiration behind the unit. Morlock tells him that the story behind the unit belongs to the king Madarica I from a long time ago. He tells them that the king had a long weenie and that he used it to reproduce 300 children. The scholars of that time used it as the basis of unit based on the length equals one Madarica. Relza comments that the story is awful. Sato wonders what length was indeed long by looking at La Fan Pan. La Fan Pan tells him not to look at her like that and gets embarrassed. At night, Dwarf Magician is traveling through the forest. Although it is unusual in his family, but because of his high aptitude he became a magician. His magic is simple. He first endured the enemy's attacks and then attacks them with a spell caster. He cares for no one and no one cares for him. He is used to living alone, but a little puppy accompanies him all the time, hidden in his helmet. He ponders that sometimes the nights become very lonely for him. Back at the cave, both man and woman are eating together. The man mentions how they have traveled so long to the 13th floor. The girl agrees and comments that it is really dark in the cave. He tells her that from here, their own attack magic won't be effective and that they'll have to cast strengthening magic on their weapons to fight. The girl tells him that they should continue their way and also tells him to stay behind her as the path ahead is dangerous. Back at the item store, the store girl, Mevina, appreciates Seitu about the fact that he also knows about the abacus. Seito tells her that he learned about it when he was a child, and that they use 10-finger based numbers. Mevina tells him that they use this system because humans have 10 fingers on their hands. Just then, someone in armor enters the shop. Mevina welcomes the person and asks if they have any medical herbs. Mavina shows her the way and tells the person to look at them. Sato recognizes her for being Relza and comments that he didn't know she has another armor. He declines by saying that he is mistaking her for someone else, but also speaks his name. Sato answers by questioning how she knew his name. If she is not Relza, she then quickly hurries out of the shop to La Fan Pan. La Fan Pan tells her that if she was curious, she should have gone with Sato. La Fan Pan also comments that Sato is pretty amazing for recognizing her. Mevina shows him the blade she bought for 18 gold coins. Sato tells her that it was made of mithril silver. And even though it looks as a dummy blade, it's still worth more than 300 gold coins. Relza is watching them both interact from the window. While continuing their journey in the cave, they are attacked by the monster. Morlock tells Sato to stay behind him but forgets the incantation again. Relza seeing the situation quickly kills the monster and comments how Morlock is being forgetful these days. Lefanpan thinks how Relza is really worried for him. 
Morlock said that Relza has now a role to assist him, and that Lefanpan can have the important role of healing his back. Among this, Sato realizes how he is a burden for them, as he cannot do anything to protect them. He thinks that he can only open locks, and that is enough to ask others to protect him. They are again attacked, and there is no end to the monsters coming out. Morlock wonders if they have taken the wrong path. Morlock tells Relza to stay behind him, and uses Fiery Heat Blast to scythe them all. But he again forgets the incantation. Sato reminds him of the incantation, and he manages to kill all of them. He again gets back pain and Lefanpan helps him. Relza appreciates him, to which Sato tells her that he thought that if he could memorize the incantations, he could at least help Morlock with his magic, and that he could be an assistant to him. They enter another room where Sato works on a chest lock. Just then he triggers something and falls into the ground. Morlock tells them that they cannot use magic inside there. Sato wakes up in the water, where he is in a seriously injured state. He tried to get up, but yells in pain and again fell down. He then thinks that they don't have a rope long enough to help him. He then wonders if others will help to save him as he is just a handyman for them. He then thinks that this world is just like his world. He remembers all the times he spent with his team. Just then, Ralza appears and tells him that they have to follow the water flow, as they cannot use magic here. Sato tells them that he thought that they would never come to save him. Morlock tells him that they will never abandon him. Relza offers her help to Sato and gives him support to walk. 